This lesson goes into more detail on the User1 account. The User1 account is a very special user on a Drupal site. This user can do absolutely anything on the site, including some configuration options that, once you are more advanced, you might disable for other user types, including the administrative user types on your site, if you are following best practices to make sure that your site is secure from potential risks. The User1 account is also an account that you cannot delete. There are many aspects of your Drupal site and the database that depend on the existence of this User1 account. In fact, one of the most common reasons why errors may occur on a Drupal site is because for some reason the database isn't able to recognize the User1 account, and so it doesn't really have all of the information that it needs in order to provide the user experience or the configuration that has been set on the site. Many Drupal developers will also follow a best practice of blocking the User1 account once they've created a site admin account for themselves. And this is something that you will want to consider doing as well because it ensures that the user one account cannot accidentally be logged into. So you wouldn't necessarily make the mistake of logging in as user one when you mean to log in as your own administrative account. It also means that the administrator must reactivate that account if they need to use it, therefore putting a little extra thought into whether or not they need to be logged in as user one. Notice that when you are logged into the site, as we are now, you have administrative tools at the top of the site. There's the black bar and then the gray bar just beneath it that says content, structure, appearance, extend. These bars give you access to sections of the site where you can manage your content, manage configuration, manage people, and do whatever else it is that you might need to do to make your Drupal site the site that you need it to be. When working on a Drupal site, it's often very helpful to open the site in two different browsers, one in which you are logged in and one where you are an anonymous user. This way, you can experience the site as the public will experience it while you're working and make it easier for you to catch errors in settings or permissions. So for example, right now, I am using Chrome and I'm logged in as user one. If I navigate over to Safari and go to the site, you'll see that the site looks very different. First of all, on the left-hand side, there's no search box, there's no add content box, and at the very top, those admin bars are not available. Also, on the left-hand side here, you see user login. If I go back to Chrome, you'll see the bars at the top, you'll see the search box, you'll see the tools for adding content on the left. This is a very helpful way to develop, especially once you start getting into setting permission levels for different user experiences. And if you have multiple user roles, not just anonymous and administrator, you may choose to have five or six different browsers on your computer so that you can actually look at the site as different user roles all in one go.